Good morning, Pastor Mark here, and I wanted to bring you some information about our response as a church family to the coronavirus outbreak. We've had uh, a very long and good meeting with the entire staff today, including the preschool and pretty much everybody that's involved at working here, and at the same time have been uh, speaking with session via email and to get their opinion. But it's been our decision that we're going to close CPC at this point in time, Thursday morning, and shut things down and stop all public gatherings in hope of stopping the spread or at least slowing the spread of this virus. There's no sure answer to this, and we've been trying all along to walk the middle ground between not caring and it being no big deal to, on the other hand, being terrified. And we've seen people on both sides, ambivalence on one side and, and absolute fear on the other. And we've tried intentionally to keep the church open, think of ways we can maintain what we're doing. But we're also aware that uh, this is probably going to grow. And it's important for us to think not only what we can do to protect the people of CPC, but to play a, an, an intentional role in our community to help slow this virus down as far as our whole community goes. And I wanna explain this to you, that it's, it's a thing called flattening the curve is what we're really trying to do. If you see in the red, this would be like the virus, uh, the number of people who are overcome by the virus, who, who all sick. And it always starts very slow, there's just a few and it slowly ramps up, but there comes a point where it just escalates. We have no idea where we are on this line. We could be up here, we could be down here. We have no idea. The worry is, is that it's going to escalate beyond, considerably beyond anything we're seeing right now. And what we want to do is flatten this curve. This purple line is the capacity of the healthcare system. It's just a simple fact that the hospitals, we got great hospitals in our city, but the simple fact is they only hold a certain number of beds. There's only a certain number of people that can be there. And if you think of even more dire situations, there are only a certain number, a finite number of respirators that are available. And if more people need respirators and breathing help than there are machines, then it's going to be a serious problem. And the worry would be that the number of people who become sick with coronavirus, and especially very sick, crosses over the line of the capacity of what the city or the hospitals, the medical system is able to take care of. And what we want to do is be a part of flattening the line. And it looks like this. In the end, there may be the same number of patients, same number of people infected as, as this way, but to draw it out over time so that it looks like this. It starts slow, just like this, and it slowly ramps up, and the curve goes like this. So that in this bubble, there's the same number of people, but they're spread out and the number of cases never exceeds what the, what the healthcare system can take care of. And so it's not just a question of our people, it's a question of what can CPC do? And I'm in communication with all the other churches or most of them in the city and we're asking the same thing. It's not just about protecting our people, but what can we do to protect our city and to play a role? And this is our belief, a very hard decision to decide to stop things at this point in time. It's been backed up. This was just handed to me by Bruce. It's the latest thing from the California Department of Health and it says the same things. You may have heard that last night the governor uh, made a message that said that uh, we're not to have large gatherings, over 250 people. So that already affects our services on Sunday morning. We would already be in violation of that. Um, but they also say on top of that, that if you have a smaller gathering, you have to ensure that people go no closer than six feet and lots of other different things to protect people. In our congregation, in our church family, there are many people who are in the range where this is a serious illness. We have many people who are younger and it should have no effect. Some people may be miserable and may have a flu-like symptoms, but it's not gonna be bad. But there are people and we're worried about these people who are older and they're in the realm where this is a very serious or potentially serious disease and we want to be very aware of them and so we've taken this uh, this decision now not lightly and not with any joy but nevertheless the belief it's the right thing to do to cancel everything or almost everything that's going on at CPC 
All Sunday services will be stopped at this point in time and a tentative date which the governor gave regarding these large-scale meetings is it will be closed until March 30th. That's the date we'll use at this point but it's very likely to increase the, the date to extend. We have no idea. We will keep you informed. Worship and all Bible studies uh, will be stopped. Tuesday women's Bible study will not be meeting. Uh, Moms club, youth group, uh, kids club, uh, all of these groups will not be meeting effective almost immediately. The one exception to this in the near future will be Espanol who has a gathering tomorrow night. We figure that's still close enough and it gives Gustavo the opportunity to speak to people face to face and tell them uh, of the plan and explain why we're doing it and work to get connections going. In all of this, we're working really hard to make sure that communication goes out to you and there will be multifaceted ways and you may receive more information than you want, including this video, which will be going along with an email giving more details of what we're planning and how we're going to move through this time. And that email will also be typed up and sent in a regular mail letter. And that email letter will also be posted on our web page. And so it's our hope and intention that everybody sees this. And it's very clearly known. We, we want to avoid people coming here. Uh, and uh, we'll try and get the word out the best we can. We're also going to work really hard at calling people, making sure people are all right. We're divvying up names amongst the staff. And we're hoping to call as many people as we can. Our dream would be to call everybody fairly regularly every week or two or three and make sure everybody's OK. We would ask that you would help us in that, that there are people in your small groups, home groups. There, there may be shut-ins or people who are widowed or are living alone. And if you know of these people, we, we're asking the entire church to step up and be a part of our care for one another and to call these people, make sure they're okay. If there's someone who has uh, an immune compromised system or their lungs are weak or they have diabetes, these are areas that the, med that the doctors have shown to be particularly harmful or, or problematic. It might be helpful or necessary for those of us who are in the healthy range to buy groceries for them, to deliver groceries for people, and, and to care for the people inside the larger church and, and even beyond the church. If you're aware of people who are living alone, who have no church family, then we want to be a church that's reaching out across all the boundaries and checking in on our friends and neighbors, and, and uh, we want you to be a part of it. We will be sending out uh, information on our regular e-newsletter. The web page, the front page of the web page will have all the latest updates of everything that is going on. We're going to send out videos and keep the Habakkuk series going. It'll be shorter. We're not going to do full-length sermons and we're not going to have the choir and all of that uh, for the sake of bringing people together. But we will be putting out a weekly little message that'll be following Habakkuk and and hopefully you'll keep along and we're hoping to put out some other devotional kind of materials and, and prayers and we want to encourage you with that in mind. Please be praying about this. This is a time for the church to be uh, prayer warriors for the sake not only of the church but for our whole community. And so we're at a time. It's a, it's a truly a crisis but it's one that we don't have to panic about. It's one that does require wisdom. And it requires some courage. It requires us stepping out boldly and doing what we don't really want to do and what might even feel absurd. But in the larger scheme of things and with the recognition of this and what we're trying to accomplish, uh, it's the wise course. It's a prudent course through the middle uh, between ambivalence and panic. We're asking you to be a part of it. You can call the church office. We will are setting up a system that all, even if someone's not here, messages are forwarded to staff, and we're working very hard to make sure that messages get to us. If you're aware of somebody who's sick and needs help, please let us know, and we will do our best to figure out how to do that. So we're asking the whole church family to be a part of this. Spread the word, if you would. Thank you for all you do and all you are. We have the best church family in the world. I am so grateful for you and for all you give and do. And uh, we will keep you informed. Thank you so much. God bless.